a little Korean, but I'm not quite Korean there either. Because I'm American. <laughs> so they were going to experience something exactly the same. And so I wanted to give them something to sort of um, digest that and maybe come up with, I don't know, resolutions. Maybe sort of like a guidance forward and sort of tell them that I know what you're experiencing and this is what it's about. And so it sort of started with um, a desk. I tried to look for a secretary desk. I don't know if you know what that looks like. It looks like that. It's like a pop opens up into a secretary. And we had a small house. And I was like, I need a secretary desk. So I looked up Craigslist, and I found something. And I was talking to the gentleman on the phone. And we were talking. And it was very nice. But halfway through the conversation, he asked me, where are you from? And I was like, I'm from Edmond. <laughs> yeah, like, and I was like, no, 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 who are you really from? And I was like, I really didn't want to answer him. But I was like, I'm from Korea. That's where, you know, my, where we originally came. And he says, yeah, I could tell. You have an accent. I was like, what? <laughs> and so, again, as I said, when I go to Korea, they know instantly that I'm from America because I have an English accent to my Korean. And from here, in here, it's just, I didn't realize that my English was because it's my first language. I didn't know I had an accent, an accent, but I do. I do not. And so I searched the internet, and this is all that came up with. It's actually a song, this children's song, and I finally got to read the entire lyrics to it, and it's pretty gross. But <laughs> but it's like I'm going to use this. I don't care. And here's some initial um, I sketches. Um, I was playing with color, texture, design. Um, it's really funny. This guy, just like I was like, ah, oh, his hair needs something, so I ended up making this. Degrade them in any way. I wanted to respect that, and I hope I did a good job on it. But I didn't want it to be unrecognizable because I didn't know what that was when I saw it. But when I showed this slide to somebody before, like, oh, that looks good. It's like, really? Oh. So how is that going? First of all, if you look at a lot of the Korean folk tales, when you see a tiger with kids, the kids are usually meat. They run away, they're trying to hide, they never confront the tiger, they're usually victims, pretty straight off the bat. I never liked that, and so I was like, I'm going to change that up. And so in this story, I had Jun and Jin confront the tiger straight away. You're not running away, we're going to confront it, we're going to look at it. Another aspect is the, um, the nine-tailed fox, Kumio. Um, I know when I like when I was growing up, I used to watch those old Korean shows that talked about like old Korean stories, like folk tales. I forgot what it's called. Yeah, yeah. It was so scary. And they sometimes sometimes have the the kumio, the right story, and they're scary. And they're on the day they're like very beautiful women, but at nighttime they they start eating you know people. I had problem with that. It's like. Why is in every culture a woman, a beautiful woman, is always this creature that alternately eats people? And so I don't like that. And so when I did research, it, I found out that Kumi originally wasn't that. It was a very sacred animal. It was an emissary. But at a certain point, politics, history, his whatever, has sort of changed that into something very misogynistic, in my opinion. And so I didn't like, I wanted to change that up. But for me, the grandmother was a very, very important part of the story. Because one thing I didn't like about American culture was the fact that if you're no longer, um, uh, was it productive members of society, right? Once you retire, you're done for it. Hey, go take a break, you know, go vacation, whatever. And they sort of dismiss you. And I never liked that aspect because. We totally, as a culture, American culture, worship the young, the youth. And they um, <clears throat> do not respect the wisdom of the elders. And if you look at a lot of the older culture, traditional cultures, the elderly wisdom, the wisdom of the elders, is very, very important. It's an integral part of growing up and not making the same mistakes, and the young people coming and asking for advice. <clears throat> and so that value I did bring with me from Korea, and that was for me a very important thing. So I kept that, and I wanted to bring that into the book. So harmony as Kumiya was perfect. 
because she was sort of the gateway between what the present and the past, which is actually true. You are the gatekeeper, right? The <coughs> elders are the gatekeeper of the past, and they have wisdom to share. And so for me, she was a very important character, and that's how I sort of incorporate that. The line works were, um, they were very delicate, so I had to go in with the digital eraser and pick up all the white so it doesn't show up when I juxtapose that against another image. And so it's all watercolor, but it's been handled. Like for this image, I didn't really have to do much. But when it comes to that complicated image, there were so many elements I had to juggle. And then if something wasn't, if something needed something, I would take a digital um, in Photoshop, digital pencil, and do similar line work just to make sure everything looks cohesive so it doesn't look piecemeal. It's much more labor intensive to do um, Photoshop than to just sort of paint it. The problem is I had nine months to do this, 96 pages, and I did the calculations and it didn't leave me a lot of room for mistakes. I, um, it's interesting. Um, when I paint, sometimes, some people have, a, some illustrators have a very specific style they illustrate with, like visual style. And for me, I never felt like I really had one. Because for me, there were a lot of different stories I wanted to illustrate. And every story required, I felt, a separate um, aesthetic sense. And I didn't want to be pigeonholed for a certain style. And so I guess that, that goes the same way with the stories. I think there's one more book that I want to do for, the, for this series. Because when I was doing the there are still elements I feel like I need to like get out. Um, so that will be another probably Korean American, and I'm going to bring that in. Is it your second book? That will be right, second book that I actually wrote. So I've illustrated other people's books, but the problem with that was looking at my style. They would give me only certain type of books, and that limited what I would illustrate. And I felt like. More than an illustrator, I was more of a storyteller. And I felt so good during this project because it was really my story and I could really do everything I wanted in the book without, no, that's not how I want it. 